Hey guys, it's Kay. I hope you're all well. Now today I'm looking at a case for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now the case is made by Energies who make a lot of other peripherals, including PC cases and keyboards. And in my experience, they make some quality goods. Okay, let's get straight into this. So first thing we see inside the box is the instruction manual, which gives us an exploded view of the case and how it all fits together. And next we've got the Perspex lid, which fits on top of the case. It's got some protective stickers on it. And you can see the holes there drilled through for the screws. And it looks pretty solid. Okay, next for the case. And we have a packet of screws and bolts and an Allen key. In the second packet, we've got some more bolts and some thermal pads. Okay, so the main part of the case is made out of metal. And of course, you've got the bottom and top, which is made out of perspex and plastic. Now the pie would sit on this plastic bottom and you would screw it in. Now, going back to the case. Now it's made out of solid metal and it's quite heavy. So it's going to take all the heat away from your Raspberry Pi. And we've got precision cutouts for all the input and outputs, including our power, our USB, our audio, and our SD card slot, and also our LED indicators. And the front USB and Ethernet slots. Now you can also screw in a mini fan to help with cooling. As you can see, the holes are already here pre-drilled. But I'm just going to be using the case as a passive cooler. Okay, let's get this protective paper off the lid. And you can see it's quite a thick piece of perspex. Now to summarize what we get in the case, we get the Allen key, and we get thermal pads, and we get some screws and standoffs for the lid, some rubber feet for the case to stop it sliding around, and some screws to screw it all together. Now I've already gone ahead and applied the thermal pads to the processor, RAM, and USB controller. I'll just remove this protective sticker. Okay, so we're now ready to put this into the case. It's just a simple case of lining up the ports and slotting it in through the bottom. Also, make sure you have the holes lined up so you can get the screws in. Then just line up the bottom with the holes in the case and the Raspberry Pi, and then use the screws and the Allen key provided to secure the bottom. You do want to make sure that all the thermal pads are making contact with the case to ensure we get full heat dissipation. Next, we're going to add the top onto the case, but before we can do that, we need to put the spacers onto the case. Now this makes a little gap between the case and the top, allowing heat to escape from the gap. You can also route any cables and ribbons through that gap for cameras and displays. Now at this point, you can also add a fan if you want to. Okay, so this is the size of the gap. Enough to let some heat out. All that's left to do now is secure the top with some screws and the Allen key. And that's it guys. I still have the rubber feet that I can put on the bottom if I want to stop it sliding around. I think it looks really good. You've got that extra headroom, so if you're doing a project, you can fit a Pi hat on the top, and it should all fit in the case without any problems. And like I mentioned earlier, you have that gap between the case and the lid for hot air to escape, and you can get the ribbon cable through there without any issues. And if you don't like it, you can remove the gap by removing the spacers. Now comparing the Anadis case to the Flirt case, which is my favourite at the moment, you can see they're both quite similar. They're both made out of metal, with the Anadis case being slightly larger both having equally good cutouts for the ports. The only thing left to do is test how well the Anadis case copes with the heat issues of the Raspberry Pi when overclocking. So now for the temperature comparison. I'm going to measure the temperature of the Raspberry Pi under load with the case and without the case. Without the case and no load, the Raspberry Pi is running at just over 50 degrees centigrade. Now, as soon as I introduce some load by opening up the browser and playing a video at 720p, it spikes to just over 60 degrees centigrade. It maxes out at 63 degrees centigrade at its uppermost level. Now with the case and no load, it's already running at a low temperature of 41 degrees centigrade. Bearing in mind, I'm running the task manager here where I wasn't previously, so slightly more load than before. Now again, I'm putting the Raspberry Pi under load by opening up the browser and playing the exact same video at 720p. Now bearing in mind, we have probably more load here because we have the task manager open also. This temperature is already lower and it's hovering around 46. In fact, during the whole test, the temperature only maxed out at 47 degrees centigrade, which is a vast improvement on the max temperature of 63 degrees centigrade without the case. So in summary, the case works very well and it keeps the Raspberry Pi's temperature in check, which is good because as you can see, the CPU of the Raspberry Pi is quickly throttled with no cooling. So if you're looking for a case for your Raspberry Pi 4 that looks good and performs well, then the Anadis Raspberry Pi 4 case might be just for you. Okay guys, if you enjoyed this video, give us a like and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.